Good morning, everyone. I'm Joe Kirchhofer with Avalon Bay Communities. Um, I'd like to thank the city and the PUC for, uh, for giving us the opportunity to present this morning. I'd also like to thank all of you that give up part of your Saturday to come out here. And Microphone closer to the mouth, please. Uh, thank you very much. And, uh, and participate in, and engage in this process. It's, it's really important that you're here. Um, we've got a lot of great ideas to share. We're very, very excited about our plan. We, we have a great plan to, to put together a, a new neighborhood that's really going to be a microcosm of all the, all the things that are great about San Francisco. A great new park, 4.2 acres of open space, a child care center for up to 100 children, a, uh, up to 1,100 new homes, um, and half of these are going to be affordable housing. So up to 550 new affordable homes, and actually the potential to add 200 more affordable homes that will be available just to San Francisco educators. Now, I'm going to be honest, there's more than we're going to be able to talk about in 15 minutes. We're going to, we've been talking about this for months. We're going to kind of just breeze through and touch on a lot of topics that are, that are pretty deep and important. Uh, but I do want to slow down for a moment and emphasize one thing. We've got a great plan. We've got a really talented team standing up here behind me that put it together. But we know we don't have everything right. We've tried to balance all the different things and the principles and, and, and the parameters that the community put together. But we know we don't have a perfect balance. I know we don't have a perfect balance because I know the only way to get there is through the active participation of the folks that know this area the best. It's the neighbors, the city college community, the other stakeholders, many of you are here today. Um, you, you guys are the ones that know what, what we need to do here. So our goal as developers, and, and so I'm the, I'm the market rate developer on our team, I'm only successful if we can create a place where people really want to live, and where people really want to visit, where people really want to spend time. And the way to figure out what that is is, is this, is, listening to you and really not just listening but understanding the feedback that you have for us. Incorporating that back into the plan. And that doesn't mean we're going to say yes to everything that we do. That's, that's not practical. It's not going to be possible. But we're only going to be successful if we can take your feedback and really have your perspective inform what our plans are for the site. Um, with that I want to introduce our team really briefly. Um, I am a, a, many of us are San Francisco residents. I live in Burl Heights. Um, a lot of us are raising kids in San Francisco. We're not going to go through every, every person, but um, as I said, I'm from Avalon Bay Communities. We are the, the developer and still the owner of the, the building across the reservoir well from here with the Whole Foods. Um, we are going to be one of the co master developers. There's, there's two master developers on our team. Um, and Nathan Hong is, is my colleague in Avalon Bay. Um, the other master developer is Bridge Housing. So Bridge is a nonprofit, and they're going to be equal partner with us and in the leadership of this, of this project. Uh, Brad and Kevin are here from Bridge. Um, Mission Housing is the other nonprofit on our team. Sam and Aditi and Scott are here for Mission. And Scott's actually a long term resident of Mission Terrace in Sunnyside. Um, Joel Roos from Pacific Union Development Company is here. Joel's a member of our team. We specifically sought out Joel because Joel's an expert at creating shared use garages and public private partnerships. And we know parking garages is one of the tricky puzzles for the reservoir development. That's, that's why Joel is on our team. Um, Habitat for Humanity is also a member of our team. Uh, I'd also like to introduce the designers. Peter Waller is here from Pine Top Architects. Karen is from Ben Peter Williams Pollock. And Gary and Wendy are here from GLS Landscape Architecture. Um, I'm very, very proud to stand up here alongside these folks today. It's a really talented group, and it's actually, it's a very diverse set of talents. We know how, how to do a lot of different things really well. And what that means is we are going to be able to be, I think, the most creative team, the most flexible team and the most able to respond to the feedback that we hear from, from, from the community from all of you. So. Great, thanks Joe. Is my uh, microphone working? All right, good, I want to make sure these are both on. Uh, Peter Waller, Fiatalk Architect. Uh, this is an extraordinary uh, community vision that you all have come up with, a very forward-looking vision. Uh, as Joe touched on, it's gonna require striking the balance, housing, transportation, City College, all these good things we want to do here, and there are some challenges in that. Everyone's been working on this and knows that. Um, but you know, that's we're gonna we're gonna get to that point uh, ultimately. I think what is what we know, having worked in this community, is that any group can do it. And we work on the Whole Foods project. There are others in our team working at the Balboa Park Station and so on. Uh, is this is a community that will put in the work to get to those creative solutions? We also know this is a community that's really going to demand uh, a good engagement process, and we're up for that. We're going to spend a moment, we're totally up for that, we're going to spend a moment walking through our plan. What I would say in advance is the open space is really the heart of this. That's the organizing principle. It is the shared amenity where these neighborhoods grow over 
your lap. It's what will make this a marvelous space for families. It really is what will create the identity, not just for this neighborhood, but we hope for the larger neighborhood. I'm Karen Murray with Family Witness Pollock. And like Peter said, our experience in urban design has taught us that the most critical factor in creating a successful vision Creating a successful vision for the reservoir is the location and character of the public open space. Our initial design places a large part at the center of the neighborhood, with strong links to Ocean Avenue, City College, and the surrounding neighborhoods. The way we can do this is by putting the auto circulation at the perimeter of the site. And the, sorry, we're, we've got it over here. And the parking entrances, so we, we're creating a pedestrian and bicycle priority zone in the center. We've also got a, a large shared parking garage. A good neighborhood fit, we've got, sorry, okay. Um, a neighborhood fit is achieved by distinct responses at each adjacent use. A larger residential is located closer to the city college part of the site, and the townhouse neighborhood is located at the Westwood Park edge with back-to-back -back rear yards buffering the existing single-family homes. Views to Mount Davidson and the ocean are preserved and celebrated. The development will also be guided by the principles of the Eco District model, incorporating sustainability, social equity, and integrated management to enhance livability and reduce the environmental footprint for years to come. All of this is fundamentally focused on creating an environment where people are the focus. The neighborhood is organized around the Central Reservoir Park with direct connections to transit and the adjacent neighborhoods with buildings stepping down to frame views and shape the open spaces. I'm Gary Strang from GLS Landscape Architecture. Um, these images are also going to be online and I think they're available in packages. Um, we have seen this uh, site which is landlocked on three sides as an opportunity to not only improve circulation in this part of the city, but also to create a largely carless neighborhood which would be distinct in San Francisco. Um, the result of responding to views and, uh, and connections and our strong diagonal, um, can you go back for one second, strong diagonal to Unity Plaza means that we have a plan with irregular kind of village-like spaces that are um, that have the texture of the surrounding community. Next. So um, what we've done, we have four acres of open space, and because we know this is necessarily going to change as a result of the community process, we have designed a plan which is derived from the natural history and the cultural history of this site, the coastal climate, the ecology, the people who live here, and the urban conditions on the perimeter of the site. Um, one of the things that struck our team was um, the kind of um, very beautiful and sculptural qualities um, of, the, of the basin and the incredible views that you can get from the top of the levee. And so, um, in order to preserve that experience of the views, we have designed a very strong landform, sculptural landform, adjacent to a community building which overlooks our new park. Um, you can see views of the ocean and the Farallon Islands from, from this place. It's a family-oriented, uh, place and at the west end of the park is a pavilion which is transparent and has uh, cover and um, it's a transition or a, it is a threshold to our new townhome community which relates to the residential scale of Westwood Park. <clears throat> our Brighton Greenway is an extension of Brighton Avenue. It is a, a um, pedestrian and slow bike access area with Meyer um, lemon groves, and avocado trees, and play areas and community uses arrayed along the greenway with views of Mount Davidson. Next. Our roofscape is working, stepping down towards the view. We have native coastal scrub habitat, photovoltaics, and farming. And we see this food, possible food focus as an opportunity to connect with the um, to a city college, with their departments and programs and uh, possibly with Whole Foods. At the um, uh, PUC easement, we're hoping that we can get some uh, temporary urban uses, such as a dog park and play areas for kids. And the final view here, I'll conclude with a view of our Gateway Plaza, a new meeting place which has a direct connection 
to our central reservoir park, a direct connection to Unity Plaza and views of Mount Davidson for those who are determined to enter the site by car. Uh, good, after, uh, good morning, I'm Joel Bruce, and I've been given uh, one minute to speak on parking. Mind you, this is a topic we can all spend hours reviewing, critiquing, and debating. And we recognize the success of the reservoir project will hinge not only on the great design, but our ability to manage the parking supply and demand. And here's how we propose to do it. Uh, we develop a shared parking garage, and we believe the most sustainable approach to operating garage is a shared parking concept. And that is to optimize the size of the garage so we keep it full 24-7. The garage should never be vacant. At night, residents of the reservoir site would occupy the garage. And during day, many of those people would be computers and would leave the site and open up the opportunity for CCSF, faculty, staff, and students. And we're hoping to take this one step further and actually satisfy even more parking demand with a shared garage, freeing up additional land for affordable housing. CCSF has identified a parcel on its site, just adjacent to us here, for a garage. Uh, instead, we'd like to put these cars underground in our garage while using the CCSF land for affordable housing for San Francisco educators. With this one move, we do three things. Provide the needed parking spaces for CCSF. Two, alleviate CCSF, CCSF of the very high cost of building their garage. And three, provide much needed faculty housing. Next graphic. Uh, the graphic, this graphic helped describe our parking solution. I encourage you to review it today, and we'd be happy to discuss it with you all further later today. Thank you. Thanks, Joel. My name is Brad Devlin. I'm uh, with Bridge Housing. Uh, as Joel mentioned, hold on, hold on. Hold on, we've got a question. services that have benefited 
um, families from all income levels. Uh, Mission Housing currently is leading the uh, community engagement process for the Balboa Upper Yard. And I see some familiar faces here today, so I know that we've um, enjoyed your feedback and your collaboration through this process as well. We look forward to doing the same thing here at the reservoir. Um, our goal is actually to engage every uh, stakeholder as possible and use and utilize all the necessary platforms to make sure that we're listening carefully and that we're learning and developing the amenities that are going to be necessary uh, to activate the community space or the common space area that we'll be talking today. Um, our 46 years of experience have really taught us the benefit of engaging, learning, hearing, and work collaborative, collaborative with the community so we can design and mold the uh, services that are best needed for, for each community. And we look forward to interacting with you. So we, we just have a couple of seconds left. Um, we just dumped a ton of information on you. Um, we, I, we went too fast. I'm sorry about that. Uh, but we did want to touch on a lot of different things. There should be handouts at your table. If you have any questions, if you want more information on anything, ask us. Um, and if there's something wrong, push us. You know, push us to make this better. Um, write down, Jeremy's telling me, write it down on the pink card, and we will, we will do our best to answer everything. Um, I did want to leave you with one final thought. Everyone on our team up here is, is a long-term owner, and we, we bring that perspective to all the work we do. We are not only going to be actively engaged in the design of this site, the first stage of this site, but once this is built, once we are operating it, owning it, working to activate the public spaces, we're still going to be actively engaged. We're going to be collaborating, uh, collaborating with each other and still be actively engaged with this neighborhood. So we're, we're going to be around. Um, with that, we're really good to hear what you thought. Very good. Thank you very much. Let's give a round of applause for that. We don't have any questions on this because we have a little question in between there, so no problem. Thank you very much. So we do have a number of questions, as you might expect, on the topic of housing and specifically affordable housing. And there's a lot of questions here, so short answers will be best. We'll be able to get through more questions that way. So in regards to affordable housing, one of the questions had to do with to what degree can we speed up the process to bring these housing units online given the acute housing shortage? Is there a way to give priority to those most in need, like nearby residents or students or others that are really shut out of housing? And just will the housing for affordability be segregated or integrated in the development plan? So that's all on the subject of housing. So, okay, so there's, there's a lot there. I'm going to toss it to Brad and, and Sam, who are the experts in this, but I, I want to say one thing. We did write in our proposal um, as far as the speed of how quickly the housing can be developed. You know, at Avalon Bay, we own market rate housing. Um, it's actually 15% affordable, but 85% market rate right there on Ocean Avenue. Um, once this project is approved, it's possible that we can convert some of those units to affordable units right away upon approval rather than waiting for the financing process and construction process. Um, but you guys want to take a crack at the rest of those questions? So, speed is important. We're in a housing crisis. Um, one of the fascinating things about the, the, this project is 33% of the affordable housing will be internally financed by the market rate housing. That will expedite the process, there's no doubt about it. We're not going to be out searching for multiple sources over multiple years. So as fast as the community and the city and the planning department will let us move, I think we have a chance to move at least that first 33% and the balance of that will follow later on. I can if I could just speak to uh, the integration question. Um, one thing that Mission Housing and Bridge and everyone on this team truly believe is that you know affordable housing, market rate housing should be integrated. Um, when we say we're providing a service like childcare or education classes or anything else, that service is for all, everyone that lives there and the surrounding neighborhood if possible. Um, you know, one good thing about the design of the Central Park and the fact that you know, Mission Housing has 46 years experience integrating our buildings with more market rate uh, developments and houses uh, means that everyone will enjoy uh, this development. You know, not just the people who live there. I really want to stress that, that when we say we're providing a service, it's for the entire neighborhood. Thank you. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. And the next uh, topic here has to do with traffic and parking. Will the team address the acute traffic circulation problems, especially at peak times? What about parking? Will we be providing adequate parking for the development? Will it also help to alleviate some of the parking pressures at City College and in the surrounding neighborhoods? So maybe you can add a little more detail on that, those uh, key subjects. Sure, you know, and we, I mean, I, I hope it's... I mean, 
I, I hope it's clear. We, we've taken that really seriously as a as sort of the obvious biggest piece of this is, is, is figuring that out, solving that puzzle. Um, the, uh, the, the traffic issues is, is bigger than the reservoir. We are going to take a crack at, at making that better, you know, improving the pedestrian and bike connections throughout the neighborhood, improving connections to transit, trying to do everything we can to help fix failing an ocean. Um, we've, we've put, uh, you know, this is a financial detail, I think it's, it's, in, a, it's in a hidden part of our proposal, but you know, we've, we've set aside $2 million just for off-site figuring out Ocean Avenue, figuring out that intersection. Um, but there's a lot of things we can do on-site. Um, Joel, do you want to talk about parking and uh, TDM too? Uh, sure. Um, and uh, you know, we, we spent uh, countless hours going through the park, various parking scenarios, uh, realizing this is... Wrap it up. Wrap it up. Um, I'll make it uh, uh, 30 seconds. Uh, so we, we've, we've evaluated the parking uh, wall uh, under construction, through phase construction, um, uh, through uh, full build-out, and obviously the build-out of the master plan for CCSF. Uh, so it's, we, we know we have to keep a careful balance of not over-parking, but not under-parking. It's that time is up, but this is a very complex subject I can't hit in, in that 15 seconds. So uh, if I see you out in the hallway, uh, please, uh, please. I, I would say that our assumption going into the parking conversation was we need to satisfy the demand for City College, for our residents, and, and anybody else that needs to use the site. So that's, a, that's been taken as a given, and it's, it's complicated. It's not an easy solution, but that's, that has been our task, is to, is to solve that. Okay, once again, a round of applause for our team. We'd like to address those right now, and then we want to stay on schedule and hear from team number two. So I need your attention, please, everybody. So the Avalon team could be ready. We have some questions that have come forward we need to address. Okay? Please, your attention. Okay. You can continue to write your comments and questions. We've got dozens and dozens of questions, and we're picking the ones that are most frequent, most common. Okay, in addition, there were questions coming up that apply to all three teams. We're going to wait to the end. So it's fair we can answer those questions as best we can at the end of the third presentation. Okay, your attention please. Alright, so the first question. Out of five questions, I'm going to let you know what the questions were so that uh, they can be prepared to divide their time. We have about five minutes, five minutes for this round of questions that came out in the course of the discussion groups. So one of them is, how tall will the buildings be in your proposal, Avalon team? How many parking spaces? How do you intend to address the parking needs of City College, the development, as well as the overall neighborhood? Do you have rentals or condos? And how large is the contiguous open space? So those are the questions. If you'd like to address those, Joe and your team, you've got five minutes for all of those questions. Thank you. Um, so let's uh, let's just go ahead and order. Peter, do you want to talk about how tall the building here be? Uh, thanks, uh, Joe. So Peter again with my talk. So the, the, in the, the parameters for this, uh, it, it said up to 65 feet in height. So basically when we laid this out, 1,100 units, we worked within that. That was sort of, you know, things from something that's going to be lower, obviously, on the neighborhood edge, 25 foot range, somewhere in there, up to 65 now. Actually, in our proposal, we also suggested, along the city college edge, maybe up to 75. The reason for that, and this has to be discussed with the community, is if we go a little higher somewhere where it makes sense, that gives us more flexibility to vary heights more. It might actually produce a better outcome. Um, but So that's kind of our starting point. How large is the continuous open space? <laughs> the, the, the reservoir park, as we've dubbed it tentatively, is 2.2 acres. Our total public open space, exclusive of all the private courts, is 4.2 acres with the greenway and everything. So I'm going to take the other easy one, rentals and condos. We will have both. Uh, we'll have both market rate for sale townhouses, along with affordable uh, condominiums or, or townhouses built by Habitat for Humanity. Um, so really a, a, a diverse mix of incomes, a diverse mix of housing types, or shapes and sizes of, of, of homes. Um, one other thing I should throw in there that we've, we've wrote in our, our presentation is at least 50% of the homes that we build will have two bedrooms or more. 
Um, so I'll, you know, hoping to attract and, and retain a lot of San Francisco families. Um, so the, the complicated one is parking. Um, how many parking spaces? So somebody asked me to sort of inside it. The residential demand is really easy. We can sort of throw a number at the residential demand. It's the city college demand. It's, it's you know, we understand that it's part of our task to satisfy that too, and that's a number that you know I've been to enough CAC meetings to hear there's a lot of disagreement, a lot of a lot of concern that we get that number right. So the first thing, our shared garage is, is sort of the key. Sizing that correctly is the key answering that question. Answering that question correctly. And our shared garage is going to be built in the second phase of this, so we have a lot of time. We have years to study this question, to watch how transit demand management changes the demand for parking spaces, to watch how city college enrollment may change. So, um, if you want, there's hands going up. The number that we've put in our proposal is a range somewhere between 1,000 and 1,300, but that 1,300 can go up. If we all see, you know, there's demand for X cars from city college, and that shared garage needs to be bigger, we can, we can make it bigger. Um, the key, though, is managing it. It's not just providing one parking space for everyone that might park a car here. It's making sure that parking space works nighttime, daytime. And we've, we've run projections. We've sort of done a lot of this work already. What's the parking demand at you know, 10, 10 in the morning? What's the parking demand in the evening during a, a performance at the new performing arts center? What's the parking demand overnight when City College goes down and, and our residents are going to fill those spaces? So I, I, I don't know if I'm going to take questions. You know, I'll come find you guys and we can talk. I don't know if I'm, I don't want to break protocol here. Um, so yeah, so. Okay, we're, did you cover all the questions? I think we covered all the questions. Okay. If we didn't, we're good. I'm, I'm the tall guy. We'll be over there. Come find us. Okay, let's thank the uh, Avalon team. One more comment. Can I, can I just real quickly on the parking, Joe, if it's appropriate? So, but in terms of the demand for our residents, we're really thinking it's more in the range of half a space. Or is, is that right? Right. So just to answer that correctly. Yeah. yeah. And that's in our buildings. We'll have parking dedicated for the residential buildings, and that is probably going to be in the range of one space for every two homes. Um, but our residential people will also be parking in the shared garage, and that's how. So you know, some of the people will be parking in the basement of their own building. Some of them will be walking across the reservoir park and, and parking in the shared garage. Okay. Very good. Again, let's thank the Avalon team for their. You can continue to write your comments. And questions, we've got dozens and dozens of questions, and we're picking the ones that are most frequent, most common. Okay, in addition, there were questions coming up that apply to all three teams. We're going to wait to the end. So it's fair we're going to answer those questions as best we can at the end of the third presentation. Okay, your attention please. All right. So the first question, out of five questions, I'm going to let you know what the questions were so that uh, they can be prepared to divide their time. We have about five minutes, five minutes for this round of questions that came out in the course of the discussion rooms. So one of them is, how tall will the buildings be in your proposal, Avalon team? How many parking spaces? How do you intend to address the parking needs of City College, the development, as well as the overall neighborhood. Do you have rentals or condos? And how large is the contiguous open space? So those are the questions. If you'd like to address those, Joe and your team, you've got five minutes for all of those questions. Thank you. Um, so let's, uh, let's just go ahead and order. Peter, do you want to talk about how tall the building here be? Uh, thanks, uh, Joe. So Peter again with PyTalk. So the, the, in the, the parameters for this, uh, it's it set up to 65 feet in height. So basically when we laid this out, 1,100 units, we worked within that. That was sort of, you know, things from something that's going to be lower, obviously, on the neighborhood edge, 25 foot range, somewhere in there, up to 65 now. Actually, in our proposal, we also suggested, along the city college edge, maybe up to 75. The reason for that, and this has to be discussed with the community, is if we go a little higher somewhere where it makes sense, that gives us more flexibility to vary heights more. It might actually produce a better outcome. Um, but So that's kind of our starting point. How large is the contiguous open space? <laughs> they, the, the reservoir park, as we've dubbed it tentatively, is 2.2 acres. Our total public open space, exclusive of all the private courts, is 4.2 acres with the greenway and everything. So I'm going to take the other easy one, rentals and condos, we will have both. 
Uh, we'll have both market rate for sale townhouses, along with affordable uh, condominiums or, or townhouses built by Habitat for Humanity. Um, so really a, a, a diverse mix of incomes, a diverse mix of housing types, sort of shapes and sizes of, of, of homes. Um, one other thing I should throw in there that we've, we have wrote in our, our presentation is at least 50% of the homes that we build will have two bedrooms or more. Uh, so all, you know, hoping to attract and, and retain a lot of San Francisco families. Uh, so the, the complicated one is parking. Um, how many parking spaces? So somebody asked me to sort of inside it. The residential demand is really easy. We can sort of throw a number at the residential demand. It's the city college demand. It's, it's, you know, we understand that it's part of our task to satisfy that too. And that's a number that, you know, I've been to enough CAC meetings to hear there's a lot of disagreement, a lot of, a lot of concern that we get that number right. So the first thing, our shared garage is, is sort of the key. Sizing that correctly is the key to answering that question, answering that question correctly. And our shared garage is going to be built in the second phase of this. So we have a lot of time. We have years to study this question, to watch how transit demand management changes the demand for parking spaces, to watch how city college enrollment may change. So um, if you want, there's hands going up. The number that we've put in our proposal is a range somewhere between 1,000 and 1,300. But that 1,300 can go up. If we all see, you know, there's demand for X cars from city college, and that shared garage needs to be bigger, we can, we can make it bigger. Um, the key though is managing it. It's not just providing one parking space for everyone that might park a car here. It's making sure that parking space works nighttime, daytime, and we've, we've run projections. We've sort of done a lot of this work already. What's the parking demand at you know, 10, 10 in the morning? What's the parking demand in the evening during a, a performance at the new performing arts center? What's the parking demand overnight when City College goes down and, and our residents are gonna fill up those spaces? So I, I, I don't know if I can take questions. You know, I'll come find you guys and we can talk, I don't know if I'm, I don't wanna break protocol here. Um, so yeah, so. Okay, we're, did you cover all the questions? I think we covered all the questions. Okay. If we didn't, we're good. I'm, I'm the tall guy. We'll be over there. Come find us. Okay, let's thank the uh, Avalon team. One more comment. Can I, can I just real quickly on the parking, Joe, if it's appropriate? So, but in terms of the demand for our residents, we're really thinking it's more in the range of half a space. Or is, is that right? Right. So just answer that correctly. Yeah. yeah. And that's in our buildings. We'll have parking dedicated for the residential buildings, and that is probably going to be in the range of one space for every two homes. Um, but our residential people will also be parking in the shared garage, and that's how. So you know, some of the people will be parking in the basement of their own building. Some of them will be walking across the reservoir park and, and parking in the shared garage. Okay. Very good. Again, let's thank the Avalon team for their presentation. And their